Okay. And he's in a, I saw some comments. He's in a two parent household with his step. Don't pay attention to the comments. Those are nothing his but. His father lives four minutes away. We gotcha. are very active in our child's life. And I That's believe you, Queen. I'm Don't pay attention to the comments. Half of them are coons and Negro peons. Don't pay attention to the comments. You feel me? Okay. Don't pay attention okay. to my comments. I attract the lowest scum that exist on earth into my lives. So, okay. here's my biggest concern, and I want you to tell me if you, yes, no, or maybe so. Okay, yeah. here, here, is, here is it. Whenever you sign an agreement, a due process agreement, or a pre-hearing conference agreement with your attorney and the charter school, right? Mm -hmm. Normally when you sign that, they often prevent you from taking that same school district or charter school back to due process a second time. Are you, do you know, can you recall, do you know whether or not you signed an agreement that you could not pursue due process again in the future with that charter school? Maybe. I have it here in front of me. I'm going to pull it up and read the fine print, but maybe so. I did sign it, um, but that was years ago. So right. No, you I signed it. No, no, no. You definitely signed the agreement, but did it have a clause that you could not seek due process again? I want you to read that at your leisure. Get you a highlighter, read it at your leisure, underline anything that sounds like it could hint at that. And then you can screenshot that and text it to me and I'll look at it and tell you whether or not that's what it's saying or not. Because what sometimes happens, let me tell you what sometimes happens. We're going to fight anyway and we'll just see what happens. But what sometimes happens is once the school gets you to sign that, saying that you can't go to due process with them again, they give you their backside to kiss. And because it sounds like you're telling me they're giving you your their backside to kiss, it almost makes me feel like you might have signed that agreement that says you cannot take them the due process again. In other words, your comp ed and your grant came with a waiver of your right to pursue due process again. Um, maybe that clause is not in there. Hopefully it's not in there. Yeah, I don't see it. Okay, um, if it's in there, we might have a little bit of trouble. But if it's not in there, then good, we could take them back to due process. And don't take them out to school. What y'all have to stop doing, you can't run from it. If the school isn't doing what they're supposed to do, there's laws that protect you. Use the laws where people say, just take your kid out. No, if he was regular ed, yes, take him out because regular ed kids ain't got that many rights. Special ed children have too many rights. No special ed parent should be taking a child out to school unless the school is paying for them to do so. Okay. So, uh, a conversation with the lawyer about APS. Are you willing to fight for me for an approved private school? What do you feel about us going for that? Take that conversation so I can hear it and then we'll decide what the next step is. Perfect. I will definitely get on to that because I didn't think to go that direction. Yes, ma'am. If he fell in, every, that's APS. If he's fell in everything and there's no way they can blame you or him, it's time for, that's APS. You cannot be failing. And the whole purpose of special ed is for you to learn and make academic progress. How the hell you got an IEP and you fail in everything and you in the special ed class all day? That is insanity. So you and I would need to talk again. So just keep me posted. You have the number. Yes. Okay. Thank you. No I problem, Queen. It. Be blessed. All right now. Sister Tanikia, am I saying that right? Tanika. Tanika, how you doing, Queen? Where you based at? Um, I live in Madison, Wisconsin. Madison, Wisconsin. I spoke in Madison, Wisconsin at the Urban League. Was that the Urban League? No, I spoke at a, a public library in Madison, Wisconsin about eight years ago. But go right ahead with your question, good sister. <laughs> We had a parent-teacher conference at my son's school. He's in the third grade. And 
the teacher was present, a psychiatrist was present, and... You mean a psychologist was present, right? I don't think it was a psychiatrist. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. And um, his math tutor was present. And so they presented me with what he's been doing lately in school. And basically they're saying he's having a hard time staying on task. And so they presented the idea of an IEP for him. Well, they presented the idea of an evaluation that could qualify him for an IEP, which is special ed service. Continue. Okay, so. But you you understood what I just said there, right? Yes, I understood okay. what, you, what you just said. Go ahead, Mom. They didn't make me feel like that's how they were presenting the information to me. Gotcha. Um, so my question is, how do I move forward or how can I help him? Okay. Take me back to the concern. What is the concern they're having again? That he's not staying on task in the classroom. And he's in what grade? He's in third grade. Okay. He's in third grade. He's been at this school since what grade? Since, um, first grade. So he's been at this school for the first grade, second grade, and now he's in his third year. Yes. You did not get these complaints the previous two years. I got complaints that he would just get up and walk out of the classroom. That was the only complaint that I got. He would get up and walk out the classroom. How did we address that? Was that a, did he stop doing it or how was that was that ever rectified or does he still get up and walk out the class? He still gets up and walks out the class. It so you Do you have any idea why your son is getting up and walking out the class? talked to him about it um, just a couple of days ago, but he's not able to express to me why he's doing that. He's telling me that he's doing it because he's going to get things out of his locker, but I think it's more to it than that. Where's his biological father? Is he involved? He's not involved. He lives in a different state. He lives in a different state. Okay. I definitely think we got a discipline issue here. Uh, you're going to have to create a discipline program for your son because if he doesn't get a little bit better with his self-control, they're going to criminalize your boy. And we don't want that because that's what they do for black boys. The whole purpose of public school is to criminalize black boys and prepare them for the school to prison pipeline. So I recommend you get you a calendar, a dry erase calendar with a couple color markers. And you get one color marker for home, one color marker for school. Let's say you got green and blue. Blue is the school color, hypothetically. So when your son comes home, you get a teacher report, have the teacher email you or text you or call you, tell you how he did in school. If he had a good day, he gets a smiley face with the school marker. If he had a bad day, he gets a sad face. And you set up a criteria for your son. You say, listen, three good days out of five is a good week for you. If you have a good week, you and mommy will do something together on the weekend. Never use money. Never use expensive gifts. Activities are always better rewards than money and gifts because our children want our attention more than anything else. Okay. So then when your son has three good weeks in a row, meaning three out of five, three times in a row, now you could do four out of five. And then when you get three times in a row, now you could do five out of five. And then when you get five out of a row, now you could go six good days out of 10 and seven good days out of 10. And you just keep on going until you get to a point where you don't even have to do it no more because you have now created a new behavioral pattern in your son. And so now we don't even have to have a behavior plan because you have conditioned him to control himself much better. You need a behavior plan. And when your son has a bad day at school, he gets a consequence that same day. Rewards come at the end of the week. Punishments come every day. So that's early bed, loss of privilege, TV, video game, outside football, whatever he does. But you're going to have to crack down on him, good sister. Because you cannot be getting up and walking out the class as no black boy in no school in the United States of America. They will definitely try to target him for emotional disturbance through special ed, conduct disorder through the clinical psychologist or juvenile detention center or behavior school. And we don't want none of that. And you're going to have to really crack down at home because if you don't, we know what the future looks like messing with these folks. Now, tell me this. Are they more concerned about his behavior or his academics? What is the real issue here? And the reason I'm asking you that, Queen, is a lot of times our sons can learn. They don't have learning problems. 
But because they have behavior problems, the teacher will try to make it look like your son got a learning problem so she could put him in special ed. So my question to you, is his real problem learning or is it behavior and are they trying to make it look like it's learning so they can get him out the class? Yeah, I think it's like that's exactly what they're doing because they're saying he can read very well, he can write very well, he can add, he can subtract, but they're saying he's having an issue with focusing and staying on task, so he'll get up and he'll just leave. Okay. He's never been evaluated outside the school, right? No. Okay. Here's something that I need you to know. They're gonna the next thing they're gonna do with you is they're gonna try to force you to get him an ADHD evaluation. I need you to say no. Do not get your son tested outside the school for ADHD or conduct disorder or ODD. Don't do it because the only thing they're going to do, I'm telling you now, I've told parents this for 20 years, they do not listen and it ends up coming to pass. If you get your son a disruptive behavior disorder diagnosis, they're going to force medication on you. Do you understand me? Yes. Do not get the testing. The testing is the hook that will bring in the drugs. Don't do it. My son will not be getting tested. He doesn't have ADHD. Now, let me go somewhere else with this. You just said that they said he can do all his work, right? Yes. So let me ask you this, good sister. Is it possible that the reason why your son can't stay on task is because the work is too easy He's finishing his work too early and he can't stay on task because he's not being challenged. And I'm asking you that because I see a lot of black boys who was called ADHD. And the real problem is they were MG, not ADHD. They were MG mentally gifted. They were mentally gifted and they were not being properly challenged. And that's why they had trouble staying on task. Is that him? Maybe it's not him. I'm just asking. We ruling out. Do you think that's him or not really? I think I think he is a little bit mentally gifted. I do think. Do you so. think the work is too easy? I don't think is. I don't think that the work is too easy. Why I you think, think he have trouble staying on task? He's he's. I can't say why he's having trouble staying on task. We got to find that out. Where's the biological father? Is he involved? No, he's not involved. He's in a different state. He's in a completely different state. He's in our home state. We moved to a different state. What's your home state? Illinois. Illinois. You're not that far away. Is there any way possible he could start spending more time with his dad? Yes. We need to make that happen. Because you know I call ADHD ain't no daddy at home disorder. Your son may simply be craving his father. And what they call inattention is really him being distracted by daydreaming about when he's going to start spending more time with his dad. So we have a potential situation where the work could be too easy. We have a potential situation where he just needs to spend more time with his dad. We know we got a situation where he needs a little bit more discipline. But let me tell you, so the, the, the bad news is they're going to try to hit you with ADHD, but you're going to fight that off. So it's not going to be bad news. Here's the good news. And I need you to know this because you're going to have to write a letter. I want you to write a letter. When was this meeting you had? When was that? This meeting was Friday. This Friday that passed? Yes. Good. I want you to draft a follow-up letter. Remember, you always follow up with a letter to the school after your meeting. You, young lady, are going to draft your follow-up letter, and Dr. Umar is going to look at it before you send it in. Your follow-up letter is going to say, I attended a meeting on such and such date with the follow people present to, dis to discuss these concerns revolving involving my son. Based on my understanding, you guys feel X, Y, Z, you guys said X, Y, Z. You guys want me to do X, Y, Z. You guys are going to do X, Y, Z. And then you're going to say, I am refusing your requests for a psychological evaluation at this time. The reason I'm refusing your requests is my son has absolutely no learning problems at all. This was confirmed by your teachers in the meeting. In order for a child in the United States of America to qualify for special education, they have to have a learning disability. My son doesn't have any learning problems. So there's no need for an evaluation for a learning disability because my son doesn't have a problem learning. And since you can't put kids in special ed for behavior problems, there's no need for the testing. Do you hear that? 
Yes. Your son cannot possibly qualify for special ed. Why? He don't have a problem learning. Like you said, they're trying to fabricate a learning problem so they could get him out the classroom for special ed. But you have to double down on the behavior because if you don't, they're going to try to keep, they're going to stay at you with that ADHD. They ain't came at you yet with it, right? No. That's going to be their next step. Here's the thing, though. We got some good news and the good news is we only got three months until the end of the year, my sister. Three months. You got to get your son to the finish line. We are in the last quarter. or We are approaching the last quarter. You need to have a sit down with him and say, listen, you got to make it to the last quarter. And this is what we're going to do to help you get there. Mama is implementing a behavior plan effective immediately. And I want you to know, anytime you have a bad day at school, there's no TV, no video game, no cell phone, no outside. You're going to do your homework Eat your dinner and you're going to bed early. And I'm going to take everything out of your room that you could possibly use to entertain yourself. So there won't be nothing in that room. Starve your son. You can starve that boy into good behavior. Because in the third grade, the most important thing for your son is your attention and interaction with his peers. If you make his life a boring hell, I promise you his behavior will change. Remember, Children do not change behavior until you give them an offer they cannot refuse. You got to double down on the behavior, come up with that behavior plan, get his father involved in his life. And I need you to work on that letter that you're going to give to the school next week. Okay. Any other questions, my queen? No other questions. All right. Keep me posted. All right. Thank you. No problem, sweet. All right. Good morning, Sister Diane. How's New York treating you? Good morning. How's New York City treating you? Good. What borough are you in, Queen? I'm in Brooklyn. Brooklyn? Okay. <laughs> tell me what's going on. I didn't get a chance to read your text. I only called you, so tell me what's going on. Okay, so um, it's a very long and complicated story. Give me the short version. So I'm going to try to give it to you as short as possible. So I have my sister who's four years younger than me. Um, she's been catching seizures from the age of 20. She wasn't born with seizures, but... How old is she, she now? Just, she's 33. Okay. So she started catching seizures after she lost her first son. Six months after she lost her son, she was... It might be psychosomatic. You ever heard of psychosomatic illness? No. It's when you go through a certain trauma or stressor and you internalize it. And it manifests itself as a medical problem. So the trauma and the pain and the grief of losing her son could have triggered the seizures. The seizures could be the internal manifestation of the trauma and the grief. It's called psychosomatic illness. I want you to look it up, you know, later on. Uh, P-S-Y-C-H-O-S-O-M-A-T-I-C. Psychosomatic illness. But go right ahead. Okay. So now... Fast forward, um, she was in abusive relationships after she lost her son. She had a daughter. Her daughter is now 12 years, 18 years old. Um, and then she ended up having another baby by another man again who is now four years old. As of four years ago, I started taking care of both her kids. She had moved to Georgia. She was catching seizures very frequently. Um, to the point where she was having them three or four times a day. So mm -hmm. she became the most bipolar psychos, um, psychosis. So she moved back to New York. Has she, she had an EKG? Um, any brain testing at all? Had they done any testing for the uh, seizures? You still there, Queen? Hello? You still there, good sister? Yes, I am. Can you okay. hear me? Yes, I can. Has there ever been any medical testing for the seizures to see if she really has epilepsy or not? Um, No. Well, they diagnosed her with epilepsy. She was catching them at night, so it was nocturnal epilepsies. Okay. 
um that's how it started and then as of three years about as of two years ago she started catching them during the day she would catch them anytime there's okay. times when my sister would have eight seizures i don't like that okay so give me I, I i feel you with what going on now give me your question for me how could i help out so my thing is i don't know because she's in the house mm -hmm. she was in the shelter and she's in the house now but every i go every doctor we go to there is no way they could help her she becomes violent after she can so I feel like my sister needs to be put somewhere where she could be able to really could help her manage taking her medications. Um, she's depressed. So I can just help um, being able to manage everyday life because she, I'm the one that's taking care of her kids. She can't do nothing. So who's taking care of the children now? Me and my mother. Okay, okay. Your sister needs some, she needs some mental health. I think she need a real good therapist. Has she ever gotten any therapy since losing her child? She don't, no. No, everywhere, like, the other kids, they don't have therapy. Mm -hmm. So the doctor no. Okay. Um, when, well, she got, when she ended up in the hospital, I asked the doctor in the hospital when was the last time she took her depression medication. They said it, it was in September. So she's not following up on medications. We don't know how to tell her to follow We've done so many things to try to get her somewhere to get the help that she needs, and it doesn't work. I don't know what else to do. Neither do I. If she don't want the help, there's nothing you can do. I mean, the only thing you can do is 302 her, and I don't really think she's a risk. She is a risk to herself, but she's not a risk to anyone else. And even though she poses a risk to herself, I don't know if it's serious enough for them to pick her up and put her in a mental health institution against her will. That's, that's what they told me. It's not that she's not, she's not, it's not that serious to the point where I... Yeah, it's going to, it's, I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm sorry you guys are going through this, but um, until she's ready to, to, to change a good sister, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you have my number, so keep me posted. Uh, I would just talk to her and try to motivate her, but if somebody doesn't want help, you can't force it on them. But I commend you for, you know, yeah. taking care of your, your nieces and nephews and staying concerned about her because a lot of people turn their backs on their loved ones who got mental, you know, mental health issues and physical health issues. So, you know, stay there for your sister and, you know, keep her in prayer and uh, keep her included into the family and just keep on reassuring her of your love. And hopefully one day she'll wake up and say, I'm ready to change my life around. Okay. okay. All right. Keep me posted, Thank sweetheart. You. No problem. I will, I will. Thank no you problem. So much. Thank you. All right, sweetheart. Take care now. Peace and love, sister. How's Chicago treating you? Well, as I'm, um, uh, uh, not good. Not good. How old is your son? And what grade he in? He's in the seventh grade. Seventh grade. Tell me what happened. So, I had to put him in a school that was close by because Chicago is zoned to neighborhood schools. You just can't walk your kid at any school. And That's most districts. Okay, so he is, he was going to a neighborhood school. He was new in the school, and this is seventh grade, and they...
we trying to figure it out. And I was about to take him to the doctor. Then when we got ready to go to the doctor, he said, Mom, I'm being slammed to the ground six times by a kid at school. Uh. And it happened on the playground a couple of times and one time on the way home. And so, long story short, I had a meeting with the, um, I called the school and the principal and the ladies in the office was kind of laughing. When I walked into school and was getting ready to have this principal teacher conference meeting, all this kind of stuff with the, the head people at the school, the lady literally had this look in her eyes, like, just bring him back here so I can put him in front of the other kid that's slamming him, and we can hash this out. In Chicago, that's a you're giving your son a death. You might as well just say, go out there and die, because these streets are ruthless for our black boys. Mm-hmm. If you're not claiming something, you're alone. I do too much to help my boy. He's a... I understand your stress. I understand your stress, mama. It's okay to it's okay to cry. Let the pain out. I don't want you to hold that in. Let the pain out. Let it out. I don't want to break his father and, and that side of the family into it because some people will die. Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't want to do that because I kept him away from that. I have a studious son. I live in Inglewood. They call him little rich kid. I'm not rich. I just know how to raise a kid. That's it. Mm -hmm. They talk proper. They call, that's what they call. Call them little white kids. I let them go outside. They bully. They took his phone. They stole his bike one time so he doesn't go outside. All his friends is online. Um... The incident went to school, so I took him out of there. No help from CPS. No help from CPS. They just kept asking me, so what do you want to do? What do you mean, what do I want to do? I want you to give me a golden ticket so I can walk him into a school over there on the north side or in Chinatown that has STEM programs. They're building robots. They're feeding into my son. You understand what I'm saying? And does he That's have the grades? Do. Does he have the grades? Oh, yes. Okay, yes. he got the grades. Okay. He got the grades. The teachers love him. Um, I mean, it, it's nothing. It's like the, it's like I got the perfect kid, but the school system is failing me. Let me, let me ask you something. Uh, have you written a letter of complaint and request for transfer to the superintendent? No. You need to do no, that. Do. You need to so do that. Listen. I will. I will do that. But let me tell you what I did do. I took him out and I have him in homeschool. How long has he been homeschooling? He's been in homeschool for about a month and a half now. How's it working out? Because I'm old school. <laughs> Lord, I feel like I'm selling him. I feel like I'm dropping the ball. I feel like I'm selling okay. him. He's telling me that he's learning more. Um, he's telling me he like it. Of course he would do that. You know what I mean? If it's easy. You get me? Mm-hmm. I'm used to kids going to school for a whole day. It seems like homeschool is a blink of an eye. And the rest of the day, you just kicking it. I got you. Uh, let me ask you this. When does school get out in Chicago for the summer? They get out in June or May? June. What part of June? Early, middle, late? Middle. Middle June. Uh, March, we got four more months of school. Yeah. Uh, you might have to homeschool them for the rest of the year. But I, I definitely understand that. Right. But I think we can get them somewhere. Uh, this is what I want you to do. You got to do a letter to the superintendent. Okay. I would call them first and still do the letter. All right. You should also do a letter to your state rep and your state senator. Okay. Remember, the schools are under the control of the state. They're not under control of the city, and they're not under the control of the feds. They're under control of the state. Oh. So you need to get in contact with your state rep and your state senator and let them know that your son is not in a safe place. He has the grades that would allow him to be successful in any of the high-achieving schools on, in another part of the city, and that's where you want him to go. 
Tell them you voted for them. Even if you didn't vote for them, tell them you did. I voted for you and I need you to get my son transferred into one of these other three schools that I want him to go to. Okay. State rep, state senator, superintendent. And then I want you to text me in about, text me this afternoon, like two or three. And uh, remind me to reach out to the people I know in Chicago public schools to see if they can help. Awesome. Thank you. No problem, Queen. Keep me posted. Please. And Dr. Umar, come back to Chicago. I'm so sorry that they did what they did to you last time you was here. Oh, yeah. They said the mayor might have canceled that meeting I was having about the uh, the migrant purge of black people. But now I'm hearing stories about students, regular students that live in Chicago. If they have any problems with their kid, they are taking the kid up out to school and giving that seat to the migrant. Get out of here. That was another argument that I was Get having. Get out of here. I want to know if the migrant is over there in a the neighborhood at a police station sleeping outside of a school that's like the Walter Payton School, the, the, um, the Scientific School of Art and Teaching. Those are the schools that I want, you know, where it's very educated. Um, if the migrants get to put their kid in that school because you stand at the police station, wow. well, then it should be open for me because I pay taxes. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. So, that's another issue we have here. I will find a place for you to have this meeting in a safe place, brother. Yes, Just ma'am. That can help us. Will do. This, we got so much coming against the black boys in Chicago to where they will turn to Larry Hoover, Blackstone, Vice Lord, Solid Folk. Yes, ma'am. Streets. And these clicks, and we are losing so many educated brothers to this mess because they see that these teachers don't care. And when I tell you the teachers look like us, they look like us, they wow. sound like us, and they and they only want to honor the, the parents that's coming up there with the Gucci, with the Louis Vuitton. You wow. got to be dapper down to get some respect around here. If you a single mother and you look like you struggling, they not listening. They gonna pat you on the head like a dog and send you out the door. Woo! Wow. You know what, Queen? I will be in Joliet. I know that's about 45 I, minutes I'm away. Already, I'm already um, on your website. I heard that two days ago, so I can come see you. Yes, ma'am. So, yes. In, in fact, text me for the info, and I'll send you the uh, Eventbrite link. Absolutely. Thank you so no much. No problem, Queen. Be careful. I, all day. Thank all right, you. Queen. Be blessed. Bye-bye. My Chicago Africans, my Chicago Africans, my Chicago Africans. I will be in Joliet on Friday, February the 23rd at 7 p.m. for the Black History Month Banquet, Building Safer Communities Together, a seminar on gun and violence prevention <clears throat> in Joliet, Illinois, Friday, February the 23rd at the Republic Banquet Hall, 113 Republic Avenue, the Republic Banquet Hall. 113 Republic Avenue. For more information, 815-768-9791. 815-768-9791. 815-768-9791. If you need the link to purchase your ticket, you can text me 215-989-9858. 215-989-9858. Uh, the info for Joliet. Uh, see if I got any more parents.
morning. Good morning, my beautiful African queen. How's Vero Beach, Florida treating you? Hey, it is wonderful. I'm actually in Fort Pierce. Fort Pierce. You know what? I was just in Fort Pierce. A couple, yeah, last week. Um, why do why do I have Vero Beach, Florida saved with your name? You used to live there. Yes, sir. Okay, but now you're in Fort Pierce, so I'll switch that over. Yes. What's your question, Queen? Okay, I have a question. Um, I have a son who is he's a special needs child. He was born premature. Um, he is um nonverbal, and I'm just wondering. I feel like he is on the autistic spectrum, but he was never tested for autism. And I'm just wondering, um, how would I go about, he's 11 years old now and he has all of the intellectual disabilities and everything. He has an IEP and all of that. And I was just wondering, how could I get him tested for, um, you know, autism? I have a question for you. If he already has an IEP, that means he was evaluated before. What is his current disability classification for which he's receiving special ed services? He's um, developmentally delayed. At 11, they can't use that at 11. He's too old for developmental delay at this point. So they had to switch that out for something else. What, 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 what What's the new disabilities? Okay, let me see. You normally can't use developmental delay past the third grade. What grade is your son in? They have him classified as a fifth grader. He's in the fifth grade, so yeah, he can't still be developmentally delayed in the fifth grade. Let me see. Let me see. Evaluation and assessment. Uh, Curriculum and learning environment, social and emotional behavior, independent functioning, communication. Nah, the disabilities, the disabilities are autism, intellectual disability, emotional disturbance, specific learning disability, which could be for basic reading skill, reading comprehension, reading fluency, math calculations, math reasoning, written expression, listening comprehension, oral expression. Speech and language impairment, deafness, blindness, hearing impairment. Yeah, he, yeah, he definitely has speech and language impairment because he don't. Um, he no, but is he currently is he currently classified with speech and language impairment, and is he getting speech therapy? Um, they not they they aren't giving him speech therapy yet. Um, yet, he's he, he's had an IEP since what grade? Since like third grade and he's in the fifth mm -hmm. does he need speech he therapy until third grade because he was going to a um nursing care place that you know take care of kids with disabilities so he was going there and they had a homebound teacher coming out there that was helping him and he was really doing really good with her and um she retired and then we had covid hit and after covid hit they took away that homebound program. And he does have the OHI, other health impaired. I heard you talking about Other health impaired for what disability? For what medical problem? What is the other health impaired for? I'm trying to see how to read this. I know one thing. I'm going to start pulling black mama's fingernails out when y'all don't know these son's cases. Y'all supposed to know these cases like the back of y'all hand. Well, yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. Evaluation and assessment results. Um, you know. Okay. Yeah, I don't see um, under evaluation for... Sus it says Joshua is currently under evaluation for suspected exceptionalities of intellectual disability and or language impaired. Okay, when was that? What's the date on that? The date on this, uh, he just did this um, June, on January 9th. And I have another... Yeah, January 9th of what, 2024? Mm-hmm. 
So you're yes. saying they're about to reevaluate them? Yes. Okay, so if they're about to reevaluate them, you can just ask them to also evaluate for autism. Oh, okay, okay. Why do you okay. believe he's autistic now? Or did you always well, believe this? Things, he, you know, he has, and, and he has a lot of behavioral problems too, you know, and, and um, it's been a problem trying to get him behavior therapy. The things he do, he has tantrums. Um, he just have these different um, things that he do that make me think, yeah, he's on a spectrum of autism. He like to turn over furniture. You know, like okay. being it could be yeah. autism, but I just want—I just want—I just want to say this: uh, be careful about loading up on the diagnoses. Okay, when I start seeing children with four and five diagnoses, that's overkill. Okay, so I'm not saying he's not autistic. I'm not saying don't ask them to consider autism as an additional disability for your son. I'm saying be careful about giving him too many because the labels are not solutions. A diagnosis is not a solution. A disability is not a solution. So be careful about overdoing it because it sounds like he already got a couple going on as it is. But if you feel he is, there's nothing wrong with him being appropriately classified if he is autistic. I'm just saying, be careful about overloading on the diagnoses. The labels are not solutions. Okay, let me ask you. It says Joshua is not seeking a cape. Okay, well, yeah, he's too young for that career in professional education, digital tool, or cape industry service. Okay. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. He, you said he had an IEP. He's in the fifth grade, right? Yes. He's had an IEP since the third? Okay, just so you know, if your son is in fact currently classified as intellectually disabled, he has to be reevaluated every two years. Every 24 months, he got to get a new evaluation. If he's not diagnosed or, excuse me, classified as intellectually disabled, he has to get a reevaluation every three years. So just know that every two years, he's supposed to be getting some fresh testing from the school psychologist to see where he is. You need to make sure that's happening. Okay. Make sure because I have a meeting coming up um, on the twenty sixth. And if he got behavior his problems, IEP, his IEP get re reevaluation is March the eleventh. Okay, now if he's having behavior problems, you need to ask the IEP team why haven't they developed a functional behavioral assessment. You need to write that down, FBA, a functional behavioral assessment and a positive behavior plan. Functional behavioral assessment and positive behavior plan. Ask them why they have not developed that for your son if he has behavior problems. Yeah, they're actually working on that. Um, we had a meeting not too long ago, probably about two weeks ago. And they're working on that. And then I got a meeting on the 26th, so February 26th. Functional behavioral assessment. Eight. Assessment. Okay. FBA, that simply means they're going to look into, investigate the functions of your son's misbehavior so they can properly have the information needed to develop the positive behavior plan. Does your son have a one-to-one -one aid in the classroom that sits with him? Yes. Okay. And, you know, he done had two incidents at school. Of, a kid pushed him because my son just started walking um, independently when he was seven years old in May of 2020. And um, he don't need a device. He had a device back then, but now he walks independently. And um, another kid pushed him out the chair, got a big knot on his head. And, um, you know, we had to take him to the emergency room because they wanted to make sure he didn't have any type of head trauma on his forehead. And then recently, I was at work and I got a call that he tripped and fell and hit his head again in that same spot. That that knot hasn't gone down yet. And I'm just wondering where was this, you know, his paraprofessional, whoever was supposed to be right there with him. I got you. I got you. Because he's at a new school. The school he was at last year kept the kids separated, but, you know, I don't know how, you know, they let him, another kid get that close to him to actually push him out the chair. 
I got you. I got you. I got you. Uh, well, keep me posted, Queen. If we need to do a consult after that meeting, let me know, because you're going to have to follow up that meeting with a follow-up letter. Okay. Don't sign nothing. If you're not comfortable, we can go over. Tell them you're not signing. Uh, I just want to hear what y'all have to say and what y'all proposing, and then we can go over it. But because your son has severe disabilities, you got to make sure they're not just pushing him through and not making sure he's learning. You got to make sure they taking his education seriously because they tend to expect that we don't take the education of our severely disabled children seriously. And so they don't either. Right. Okay. I appreciate it. No problem, babe. Keep me posted. Thank you. All right now. No problem. Okay. Before I call the next parent and we're going to end at 11 o'clock because we've been at this since eight. If you need a private consultation about your child, education, or mental health, you can text me. So we're going to go for 30 more minutes, or should I say 27 more minutes until 11 o'clock. Okay, but if you have a question about your child, 215-989-9858. Text your name in your city if you have a question about your child. Here's what I want to say about paint day. Paint day, paint day. Here's what I want to say to the donors. If you, we have started, we took our first donation for the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. Before I go to these last couple parents, we're not done. I just want to add this. We took our first donation for the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. At 12, 2024, that will be 10 years. April 12, 2024, that will be 10 years. April 12, 2024, that will be 10 years. If you are interested in being a member of the paint team for the indoor paint day inside the Marcus Garvey School of the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy, if you would like to paint, you must be a donor. You must be an FDMG donor, but I'm gonna go a step further. From April the 12th of 2014 to April the 12th of 2024, you must have donated a minimum of $300, a minimum. If you have not donated a minimum of $300 from April the 12th of 2014 to April the 12th of 2024, you cannot be a part of the first wave of the paint day. I want to make sure those people who have really held us down, if you have donated more than $300 to FDMG and you would like to be invited to the paint day, if you have donated more than $300 to the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy and you would like to be a member of paint day, male, female, elder, or youth, if you have donated more than $300 over these 10 years, to the Frederick Douglass and Marcus Garvey Academy, please text my phone, Dr. Umar, I would like to come to paint day. I have donated more than $300. This is my name. This is my cash app. This is my PayPal. I need to know how you have donated so I can look it up. I need to know how you have donated so I can look it up. I need to know how you have donated so I can look it up. If you donate it through PayPal, say I've donated through PayPal, give me the PayPal email. If you donate it through Cash App, say you donate it through Cash App, give me the Cash App handle. If you donate it through Check a Money Order, tell me you donate it through Check a Money Order, give me the first name, last name, and the mailing address for you so I can verify the amount of money you are claiming you have donated. We're only going to have 30 volunteers for Paint Day. 30 volunteers for Paint Day. They must all be donors. I'm going to give those of you who have donated at least $300 the opportunity to be the first to be selected for the indoor paint day. After I've given my primary donors the opportunity to sign up, if you have donated less than $300, you will then have an opportunity if there's still spots left. Male, female, youth or elder. Male, female, youth or elder. Male, female, youth, or elder, okay? My cell number is 215 989 
215-989-9858. Now, if you are 65 or older, you do not have a donation minimum. If any of my elders who have donated want to paint, as long as you have donated as an elder, you can paint. Elders are not held to the $300 standard. Elders are not held to the $300 standard. If you are a youth, if you are a youth under the age of 21 and you want to volunteer to paint, you can sign up. 21 to 64. You need to have donated at least $300. 21 to 64 years of age, you need to have donated at least $300 to be given priority placement on the paint day list. If you have donated less than $300, you can still join the team, but only after I see how many priority donors want to paint. Once I see how many priority donors want to paint, I will then fill up the rest of the slots with others. Priority donors, you have one week to let me know. Priority donors, you have until next Sunday morning, 10 a.m. to let me know if you want to paint. After that, I will select donors no matter how much they have paid. Under the age of 21 and over the age of 64, there is no dollar requirement just text me. You must include your cash app. You must include your PayPal. You must include your first and last name and your mailing address. The paint day will not be announced to the public until we are in the school painting. The paint day will not be announced to the public until we are in the school painting. The paint day will not be announced to the public until we are in the school painting for obvious reasons, coons, coonets, Negropians, haters, YouTubian struggle streamers, fake wokers, jealous conscious community people. So we're going to keep it private till we're in the school actually painting brothers, sisters. And after we done painting, we're going to go and eat. After we done painting, we're going to go and eat. It will be a two day event. It will be a Saturday and a Sunday. It will be a Saturday and a Sunday Whatever we don't do on Saturday, for those who can come back on Sunday, we will finish up. Okay? There will be two people to a room. There will be two people to a room. There will be one brother and one sister to a room. Y'all will not be flirting. Y'all will be painting. Y'all will not be flirting. Y'all will be painting. There will be a brother and a sister to each room. You will not be flirting. You will be painting. I'm still taking in, in, in input on colors. I'm still taking input on colors and we're going to go and have a family dinner Saturday night. We're going to go get some sleep and we're going to come back Sunday and we're going to have another family dinner at a different restaurant Sunday evening. So for those of you who have donated at least three hundred dollars over these 10 years, text my phone, Dr. Umar, I want to paint. My first and last name is such and such. I've donated approximately this amount of money. This is my cash app you can check. This is my PayPal email address you can check. This is my name and mailing address you can check. We have logged every donation. Every single donation made to us is logged and documented. So nobody can come. to the phone lines. Kalamazoo, I'm going to see you Tuesday. Let's go back to the phone lines. Flint, Michigan, I'm going to see you Wednesday. Let's go back to the phone lines. Joliet, Illinois, I'm going to see you Friday. Let's go back to the phone lines. Guadeloupe, the island of Guadeloupe, I'm going to see you next Monday and Tuesday. Lower Marion, Pennsylvania, I'm going to see you next Thursday. In Philadelphia, I'm going to see you next Friday, March the 1st. For the comedy and consciousness bash, let's go back to the phone lines. Let's go back to the phone lines. Let's go back to the phone lines. The dinner is free. Of course the dinner is free. Of course the dinner is free. 
Good uh, morning, Miss Noel. Have we spoken? No. no okay. Where you base? Where you base that, sister? Where you base that? Uh, I'm in Claxton, Georgia. Claxton, Georgia. What's your closest major city? Um, Savannah. Savannah. I spoke in Savannah last Saturday for the second annual Gullah Geechee Grand African Ball. It was beautiful. You might want to come to the third annual next year. Okay, that sounds great. Go right ahead with your question or concern. Yes, my concern is my son was diagnosed with autism back in 2021. He How old now, was he at the time? He was, um, I believe, uh, what, he was born 2019, 2022, two and a half. Your son was diagnosed with autism at two? Two and a half, yes. I want to tell you, I think that that was a very premature diagnosis. You can't really prove autism at two and a half. Even if we see the symptoms, it's normally best to wait until you can get a much more firmer diagnosis around five. I prefer seven personally, but four or five is better. Two years old, that could be speech and language. That could be hearing impairment. That could be selective mutism. That could be social anxiety. That could be all kinds of stuff, developmental delay. But to say autism at two, that was kind of young. I just wanted to give you that input, but go ahead. Yes, and so he does have an IEP. He is four. He is in um, the elementary. Uh, he is like a prep class, so he can go into kindergarten. Okay, so he has early intervention IEP, is that correct? Yes. yes okay, does. and he's currently getting early intervention services at what, a daycare center? Preschool? It's, what, it's, it's a preschool, most likely, yes. Okay, go right ahead. And so him taking that, um, he does have the IEP, um, but um, I don't know about the evaluation. Um, he, he, they say he's dis he has a disability. But now you're telling me he's, you know, it's too young. No, autism is a disability. So he's already classified with a disability. What I'm right. saying to you, good queen, in the interest of your young prince, yes. I want you oh, to observe him. Back. Listen he to me. He, his name is Prince. Chris, okay. I want you to observe him over the next three years. Okay. Okay. Especially between now and kindergarten. Because you as the mother are going to have to guide the diagnosis that is made later on. In other words, you're not going to let them label your son with anything you don't believe in yourself. Do you feel me? Uh, Our parents have a bad, a bad habit of letting people diagnose our children with disabilities that y'all don't even agree with. So why would you let them do it if you don't agree with them? Even though you're not a psychologist, you know your child better than everybody else. So I want you to observe Chris between now and the start of kindergarten so you can determine if you believe your son is autistic because it could just be a hearing problem. It could just be speech. It could just be, you know, uh, social anxiety. It could just be a developmental delay. So observe him because what I don't want to see happen is you place your son in a autistic class in kindergarten and he's not really autistic, but he will become socially autistic, socially induced autism because he will mimic the behavior of the children who really are autistic, although he isn't. Wow. Be careful. Be careful. They are throwing that autism around with every American African boy who looks a little bit socially anxious, a little bit uh, verbally delayed. Any black boy that's a little socially anxious and a little verbally delayed, they slap an autism on them. Sometimes it's correct. Sometimes it's incorrect. I'm saying take your time. Okay. Will do. Continue. Yes. Yeah, so, um, okay, well, that, that, was, that was pretty much my, my question. With my I want you to take your time. The other thing I want you to take your time with, let me ask you this. From what you see. Do you think he's a high functioning autistic kid, a low functioning autistic kid, or do you think he's average? Um, well, because he's not, he, he'll sing songs, he'll sing his ABCs, one, two, three. What about his ability to learn, his ability to pick up new information, uh, letters?